This is another sign of the times, an analysis and a commentary. Higgs boson discovery, the search for the arcane theoretical particle known as the Higgs boson, or the God particle, has drawn on the world's largest scientific instruments and occupied thousands of researchers over more than two decades. The discovery our probable discovery at CERN, the particle physics lab near Geneva, will go down as a triumph of science, engineering, and collective hard graft. Now the real work begins. Months and years of analysis lie ahead to confirm that the particle is the elusive Higgs boson. If so, physicists want to know whether it is the simplest kind of particle put forward in physicist theories are something more unusual and more exciting. It's clear there's a great deal more to be done experimentally even after they announce a discovery, said a professor of physics at the University of Texas at Austin who won the Nobel Prize in 1979 for work that used the maths behind the Higgs theory to show how two forces of nature electromagnetic force that carries light, and the weak force, which drives some kinds of radioactive decay, were one in the early universe. The Higgs boson appears in a theory first fleshed out in 1964 by Peter Higgs at Edinburgh University and five other physicists. Finding the particle proves there is an energy field that fills a vacuum of the observable universe. It plays a crucial role of giving mass to certain subatomic particles that are the building blocks of matter. The Higgs field is thought to have switched on a trillionth of a second after the Big Bang that blasted the universe into existence. Without it or something to do its job, the structure of the cosmos would be radically different than it is today. The tough job ahead is working out whether the Higgs particle is a simple, singular particle that underpins what physicists call the standard model, a set of equations that describe how all the known particles behave, or something more complex. One possibility is that the particle they have found is one of a larger family of Higgs particles. To find out, they must study in exquisite detail how the particle is made in the LHC and how it disintegrates into other more familiar particles as soon as it is created. It will take a lot of time, I don't mean decades, but perhaps years to verify all the predictions of the standard model about how the particle is produced and how it decays. The race at CERN now is to collect as much information about the particle as possible before the Large Hadron Collider closes down for about two years at the end of 2012 when the engineers are due to carry out repairs to enable the machine to run at its full design energy. Following a helium gas explosion that wrecked part of the collider in 2008, the machine was restricted to running at half energy until the Higgs boson was discovered are comfortably ruled out. Seeing something new is really the beginning of this long journey to understand what on earth it is that you have seen, says Tara Shears, a particle physicist at Liverpool University who works on the LHCb detector at CERN. It's like turning up to a railway station. You pick someone up who you've never met before. You arrive at the station. The train comes in there's someone standing on the platform. You're guessing it's them, but you're not going to know until you walk up and check who they are. It's also like seeing the footprint of a dinosaur, but not the actual dinosaur itself. Much is riding on what CERN finds, or fails to find. Some physicists fear the laboratory might discover only the simplest form of Higgs particle, and nothing more exotic. 
that would plug a hole in the standard model, but give scientists no leads to help them understand other pressing mysteries in nature. What is the invisible dark matter that clings to galaxies and makes up a quarter of the mass of the cosmos? What is dark energy thought to drive the expansion of the universe? Why are we made of matter instead of antimatter? Why is gravity so weak? The standard model has nothing to say on these questions. Physicists have no answers. A family of Higgs particles is predicted by many versions of a theory called supersymmetry, which says that all the known kinds of particles in nature have heavy and visible twins that have yet to be discovered. So far, at the LHC, there is no sign of supersymmetric particles. One of the great attractions of supersymmetry is that it shows how three of the four forces of nature were one in the early universe and separated later, leaving only gravity unaccounted for. Some particles predicted by supersymmetry are prime candidates to make up dark matter. The Large Hadron Collider was never just a Higgs hunting machine. Other research programs hope to understand dark matter, dark energy, antimatter, and look for extra dimensions for space. Hidden extra dimensions are woven into string theory, an ambitious area of physics that describes particles as tiny vibrating threads of energy. There's so much other stuff we really don't understand at all, and in that respect, the LHC is just at the beginning of trying to understand what we don't know in the universe, said Shears. If the LHC can give us insight into some of these other areas that will stretch our understanding out far beyond what we know already, and that ultimately is what we want to do. We built the LHC to go out there and understand as much of the universe as we can. In other words, what is the nature of the Creator? Yes, everything is made of numbers. Everything is connected and everything is numbered. It's also called fate or destiny. This is about understanding God and this is another sign of the end of times as we know them. Transition days, a time of extraordinary happenings, events, and changes. Everything that must change, must change, quickly or rapidly, and for the better, because it's about having a future, and about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations. Again, Genesis, Chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. 3. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 4. And God saw the light, that it was good. God divided the light from the darkness. 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. 6. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. 7. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters from which were under the firmament, from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. 8. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Yes, it's about understanding the Creator, and all these are more signs.